first things first i want to check this article out because I, I didn't end up checking it out but it's a pretty good look so big up fucking fear of on um the courtesy of the atlantic is fear of on the next joe rogan or is he something else entirely what an amazing article to have written about you is fear of on the next joe rogan um let's see what they're saying here someone is talking to you or is he talking to himself deep spacey voices pondering pauses and was that resinius resinius what's that word mean i've never heard of resinius resinius resinus resin what's resinius mean what is resinius fucking not even telling me what what does that mean let me know Connected with producing resin. Res he's got a resin voice. A resinous Louisiana accent. What does that fucking mean? If you're on the stream chat, let me know. I never heard the term resinous. Resinous. Resinous Louisiana accent. As in what? He's got a resin voice. It leaks. It is more like coming jokes. Anyway, there's this thick voice and it says the devil's out there. That's Satan, baby. That's Lucifer, bruh. That's Lucifer. That's a dark sniffer. Your whole life it goes. You think, oh, I'll just keep judging. People keep at a distance. But then I get at the end of my life and I realize, you know what? I didn't win anything by doing that. That was a trick. The only thing I won was being alone. Fear Von is not a preacher. Not officially. Officially, he's a comedian with a podcast, but unofficially, he'll take you right there into the biblical light, into the hell chasm and the soul of its solitude and the benevolent rays of the divine. The Lord lurks where the devil jerks. <laughs> I love that quote. The Lord lurks where the devil jerks. That's so fucking true. Vaughn says, if he could just get the devil onto his podcast, if he could land a two hour download with Lucifer, that darkness sniffer, the snorter of lions of uncut night, he probably would. This is a really good article. They don't really write good articles about comedians. This is actually a nice one. He's not a diddler. He's not raping people. Nice. He doesn't ghost girls. That's nice. Von this past weekend is huge. This is currently the eighth most popular podcast in America. That's a big achievement, right? To think of all the podcasts out there, this guy has the eighth most popular one. Is really cool, especially considering how new he is. Sandwich between This American Life and Ben Shapiro show, number one is of course Joe Rogan, where the bros burble for hours on end. Where cigars are smoked and where theories are floated, Vaughn has been on Rogan's show multiple times, and while the piss past weekend is fully inside of Rogan algorithm, partaking on the same vibe as the heady masculinity and the unsanctioned speech, tapping the same world of the cancelled professors, polar plungers, hungover stand-ups and supplement salesmen, moonlighting mystics and grifting neuroscientists, the gleaming mixed martial art warriors, wouldn't the ultimate Rogan guest be of all above? It's also different. The person who writ this, were they on fucking shrooms or something? These lines are like, what are going for this? Were they on some kind of drugs when they were writing that fucking paragraph? What the fuck? Fyodor Capitiani. Oh, is that his name? His name is Fyodor Capitiani. Fyodor Capitani von Kurnostovsky. Fucking hell. Fyodor Capitiani von Kurnostovsky III grew up in Covington, Louisiana, and is a showbiz wise. He came up on the hard way. Multiple seasons on MTV reality show Road Rules and its spin offs, acting roles here and there, gigs hosting an online TV recap show and hidden camera show, and a lot of stand up, including an appearance on Last Comic Standing. Plenty of time to home his character or persona, plenty of time to screw it up completely, but although authentic, authenticity is the biggest stick of all, Von at 44, he's only 44. Fucking hell, okay. Fair play. Mulleted, surf, um, surely that football does seem to have a grown into himself. Kevin Nealon on his YouTube show, Hiking with Kevin, asks Vaughn back in 2019 about his Louisiana accent. For a long time, I tried to pretend like I didn't have one, Vaughn replied, because I was trying to fit in. That was the devil decoy right there. To be fair, I've always felt like Theo has kind of hammed up his accent. I don't think he actually speaks a lot like that in real life. I think he puts it on a little bit more on camera, which is perfectly fine because it helps him kind of stick out and stand out a bit. Um, it's also really interesting that he has a lot of TV experience early on. Obviously, it was on shitty shows that didn't really go anywhere. But I wonder if that kind of having to perform at that level professionally in a professional environment, being told what to do, has kind of lent to his success in podcasting. Because he can do, because he, that's the thing, a lot of those podcaster guys, they always talk really badly about Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood this, Hollywood that. 
but they couldn't do the Hollywood thing if they tried. If they had to kind of turn up and do like a daily show, be on set on time, know their lines, they would fucking all fail, right? And they t hate being told what to do because they want to just live like, you know, they want, you know, Peter Pan syndrome thing. They want to live like kids for the rest of their lives. But I think Theo's had the ability to kind of work a quote unquote as a, what he's, he's had to work as a working comic, as an actor in Hollywood. So maybe that's helped him when he came into podcasting. Maybe that made the, you know, because he worked in such confines and then getting podcasting's a bit more loose. But because you know how to work in a, in a tight compound, you could take that tight compound, work it loose and become popular. Who knows? I'm waffling. It continues. This past weekend is different from Joe Rogan experience because Vaughn is different. From a start, he's also interviews quote unquote regular people. That's why I think he's his superpower. Theo's ability to make the regular person seem interesting and to put them up on the you know on a pedestal the same way as his comedian friends is the best bit because it reminds you of early rogan early rogan he would invite randoms on his show like not random random but you know it'll be a little bit more of a range nowadays it's basically the same type of people but it'll be a real broad range of people from porn stars to bouncers to lead singers guitarists djs comedians restaurateurs critics it'll be all over the place and i think fio has got a little bit element of that og joe rogan spirit in his pod and also og church what's happening right now like random people random stories they get loose they get silly he has obviously a bit of a dark history dark past um you know played you know dance with the devil back in the day so that ability to kind of tap into those stories as well is really kind of good so he's great i think there's a video of him interviewing some nine-year-old kid he's like i guess he's like a tiktok kid like who can do that you know what i mean who can interview a literal child and make it fun only fucking feel this public is different from Theo. For a start, he also interviews quote unquote regular people, a mortician, a plumber, a female truck driver. Then there's a religion thing, a spirituality, freely access in the conversation and monologues that mixes the gospel of Alcoholics Anonymous, he struggled with addiction himself, with the backgrounds in Southern Christianity. He responds to calls from on the rope of alcoholics, from someone worried that their friend is doing too much meth. <laughs> he offers them by large thoughtful advice and much more important, a sensation of brotherhood. Man, I know that tired and brother i'm tired i'm tired i'm tired of feeling alone i'm tired of also not even being there for myself i mean that's the loneliness bro when you don't even have yourself and that's i think is one of the best parts about him when he does his solo pods i really do enjoy mostly his solo pods he don't do a lot, a lot enough of them now because he's super famous but i feel like his solo pods are amazing when he gets the calls and he's able to you know understand where these people are coming from because he once was a regular guy i think that's also important um, and learning he's only 44 is interesting because I wonder if part of the reason why I love Theo is because he made it late. He kind of made it late, right? He kind of, quote unquote, failed as like a regular, you know, kind of TV presenter, host person on regular TV. And then he found fame and fortune and notoriety and stand up a bit late in his career, maybe like late 30s. I think that might be the reason why I like him because he had to work probably regular jobs. He comes from humble beginnings. So he's a bit more you know a bit more relatable to regular people as opposed to these other comedians who are all kids of fucking rich people i don't know am i to make sense i don't know maybe i'm not really saying this um then there's a von's brain which is very different von muses be, um bit be, beatifically 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 why am i why have i no i've never heard of this word ever in my life beatifically muses beatifically what the fuck does that mean beatifically Beatifically. What the fuck does beatifically mean? Display great happiness and calmness. Beatifically. Wow, never heard of it. Okay. Um, Von uses beatifically. He has little visions. How to describe the experience of listening to him riff. It's fast and slow. You're caught in a sort of languidly blooming stonery revelation, but with brilliant sen um, sen 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 what the fuck is this again? All these words I'm fucking finding in the fucking Atlantic. Sin Scintillas. Scintilla. 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 A tiny trace, a spark, a specified quality of feeling. A scintilla. Oh, a scintilla. Okay, I've heard this word. Okay, cool. Scintilla. 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 Okay, cool. Fair play. Um, He's fast and slow. You're caught in a languidly blooming stonery revelation, but with a brilliant scintillus of poetry zipping around in light speed in the foreground. Like somebody in the fucking like great beyond pressed the fucking doorbell that you didn't know was connected to you. 
that according to Vaughn is how it feels to get tasered and this is how it feels to be an hallucinogenic drug DMT it's like God hit you with a mirror but he hit it so hard he hit you fast and the cop showed up with Vaughn I went on a bit of a journey his two Netflix specials regular people and no offense left me cold stalking around that twangy stand-up energy overdoing his accent and making jokes about Denny's waitresses being ugly I wasn't into it I didn't laugh yeah that's the only disappointing thing and I think that's it must be hard than it because I think we can all agree in the chat podcasting has killed stand-up and I think for some comedians it takes away from their ability to perform on stage because none of Theo's specials are good none of them the only good clip of Theo he does stand up is the one where he does stand up after going on on Joey Diaz's pod when he used to do drugs. I think he took like a an edible or something and he was super high and he went on stage and he fucking crushed. But his specials are rubbish. But he's so funny on a podcast. So maybe the podcast take some of your funny powers, you know, doing a podcast, you know, four hours a week maybe more with randoms you guess on other shows it takes something out of your stand-up i think so it must do because theo is so funny on pod it's like andrew santino um andrew santino is amazingly funny i think on pods but when he gets on fucking stage yeah you know the same could be said for crystal early crystal wasn't as funny on stand-up but great on pods so i don't know i think there's something about podcasting that takes it out of you um then as I got deeper into this past weekend, his hazy backward conservatism swam into view. His hazy backwards conservatism that sharpens now and again into a early onset Trumpism. I had a political panic. Von chats with Tucker Carlson, Putin's ass kisser, with Jordan Peterson. He laments the loss of national pride. There's some infection in America. The rapper producer Logic, he says, I think there's a lot of men out there who are gay, not even because they want to be. It's because all their straightness got jerked out of them over time by looking at pornography. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious wait what geologic yops um ufc president dana white comes to the podcast talking about friendship with donald trump and the endless jokes about homeless people and the endless hang on was that racist god damn it i said myself feels a shield he's a sinister vector of and reactionary bullshit he's a license for of the court of steve bannon oh fuck off mate don't relax even if he is a conservative who gives a fuck honestly who gives a fuck who gives a fuck are they funny yes or no do they make you laugh yes or no do they help you pass time while you're at work while you're hanging out with your kids while you're doing the fucking chores around the house yes or no cool do they help you with your study yes or no cool that's it who cares who they vote for really who gives a fucking fuck especially nowadays knowing you know what you have going over there in america now is trump really that bad of an option compared to biden really let's be real come on let's chill out but this is the, this I decided is a category error. Von speculation exists in a weightlessness comedic space, and it's kind of a Trumpy space, a what you call it, a carnival esque, a carnival esque space, semi appalling in poor taste. But it's just where and we're at right now. The joke has hollowed itself out. Von's got a bit, a revive, and it's like an early George Saunders story about how poet, how pre, how pretty soon we're all going to be uh, pretty soon we're all going to be uber drivers and the only way we will be able to get a fare is to be forced another uber driver at gunpoint to become our passenger <laughs> do you feel like we could really end up in a lifetime heading into a revolution he asked comedian shane guinness or some sort of place where it's all top it's all topples over we're kind of getting there it feels like it the baseline of von's humor is catastrophe is catastrophic or post-catastrophic like the crack ups already happened and we have the damaged thought process these whirling daydreams and one-liners interviewing wayne owen a retired sanitation worker from stanton island von becomes fixated on the fresh kills landfill closed in 2001 and now greened over and on the official whose job is it to control the local deer population so they're doing an animal vasectomy out there on the landfill he also he asks wonderingly and you hear a faint chiming in his brain the sound of a comedy starting to happen fear of von's poetry the fucking nut grinch <laughs> he says the sperm dexter the dudes out there are fucking clipping bucks <laughs> sperm dexter is fucking hilarious when von is on he's unstoppable his recent conservative conservative concert uh, his recent conversation sorry two-hour improv jag with the comedian tim Dillon is so brilliantly hilarious such a flaming atrocious summit of the american absurd i had to pull my car over and sit there weeping with laughter and relief yeah i have to be honest there's been time back in the day 
where I've had times where I've had to like stop. Like there's been times I've been on the train busting up listening to a pod it doesn't happen too often nowadays because every pod has turned into another fucking political hot take machine or like a platform to complain about council culture or to talk about the beauty of stand up and the business and all this sort of nonsense but when podcasts were podcasts and they used to be just funny and good distractions from regular regular life i would cry at times i'd be crying literally at work trying to cover my mouth um so von's a man of now uh, mentally he's in his own place but his powers and connection are considerable people open up to him and like america he's on the cusp in one future i can see him big up big up big up it's not who he votes for it's who he's chilling with on his show big aaron Avenger, rogers Avenger. rfk jr tuck not very comedic ah okay i see i see i see i see i see yeah yeah that, that, that makes sense it's the people who they hate more they hate mostly those people as opposed to him and he's if he's got conservative views they probably don't give a fuck but it's mostly the people that they despise okay that makes sense big up angel ranger appreciate you but also those guests are fun do you know what i mean that's the thing i wish there were left-leaning people who are as wacky and fun as those people you mentioned that's, that's probably another issue where are those people? I mean, get more fun. AOC should go more pod. Like AOC should go more pods. I bet AOC is fun. Outside of her being a bit of a redact, I bet AOC can be funny. She should go on more pods and kind of even up the balance a bit, you know. But again, they probably won't do it because they all want to be proper and say the right thing. Anyway, in one future, I can speak up, Andrew. Andrew I appreciate you. In one future, I can. In one future, I can see him doing bits at a right wing rally getting big laughs from the goons with his um non-wokery at which point he ceases obviously to be funny no that's not true you can be funny even if you're doing right wing shit come on let's be real in another he carries a strange but massive con constituency of fiends seekers truthers strugglers and comedy nuts the strange planet that is his audience to somewhere new somewhere genius and somewhere out there beyond the current paradigm in that scenario we hear his voice and we begin to heal ourselves wow very glowing right um jeff james parker was on some stuff maybe some addies maybe some coke maybe some md when he wrote this but this is a really nice article about theo perfectly encapsulates why people like myself like him and i think a surprisingly refreshingly good op-ed on a fucking comedian usually these articles are not good because they're like Theo the monster who fucked all these Asian girls and never called them back you know what I mean but this is actually a good fucking article so big up Theo Von for being an absolute G and big up James Parker for writing a glowing article on fucking Theo at least now we got some decent comics out there getting some good love in it fucking great to see um Big up the stream chat. What are you guys saying? Sophia in Portland, Maine. He was good. Big up Uche. Yeah, I want to see him when he comes to the UK for sure. I say this, but then I'll buy tickets and turn up. But yeah, I want to see him. He's fucking awesome. Um, big up Elephant Graveyard. What's wrong with podcasts? Um, is there aren't enough members of the US Congress making appearances? <laughs> okay, fair point, Elephant Graveyard. Fair point. That's what's missing in podcasts, right? We need more Congress. <laughs> That's how we make podcasts great again. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Big up Elephant Graveyard. Fucking G. Um, far fig better than the guy who's already dead. Big up AZ. Big up um John Joe from MIA. Big up AZ. I hope you. Big up um Joe from MIA. I hope you're well, my friend. It's an honor and pleasure for you today. Coming at you live from the city of Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. Yeah. Big up Farfic. Uh, big up sorry Joe from MIA and also Farfic. Hopefully you're all both good. <laughs> 